Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this quick video, we're going to talk about Python sets. So I recently saw an article on Python sets and some different use cases for them, and I thought it would be a great topic to do a video on. So sets are one of those data types that people often forget about, but they're extremely useful for solving certain types of problems. It's also a popular data type for solving certain job interview questions efficiently. So in this video, we'll look at some examples and some good use cases for sets. So first of all, what is a set? So a set is kind of like a list, but it removes all of the duplicate values. Now there are also some extra useful methods that we can use with sets that we can't use with other data types. So for example, we can use the intersection to get all of the elements that are uh, the same in multiple sets, or we can use the difference method to get all of the elements that are in one set, but not others. So anytime you're doing comparisons where you're uh, creating lists of values that are in one list and not another list or anything like that, then sets are usually a great way to go. So first of all, let's just look at some simple examples. So to create a set, we can simply pass in a list of values to the set function. So I have a set here that just takes in a list of numbers one through five, and then I'm printing that out. So if I save this and run it, then we can see that it prints out this set. And it looks like a list, but it has these curly brackets instead of square back brackets. So we can create a set that way as well. So I could take the same values and just replace the set function with these numbers inside the curly braces. So I will just replace where we're creating this set. And instead, you can just create a set this way, like a list, but with the curly braces. So if I save that and run it, then you can see that we get the same result. Now, one thing that you have to remember when doing it this way is that if you want to create an empty set, then you can't simply just get rid of all these values and use an empty uh, set of the curly braces because this will actually create an empty dictionary. Um, so to create an empty set, you actually have to use that set function and just pass in no arguments. So that will create an empty set. But the empty curly braces will create an empty dictionary. So just be on the lookout for that if you want to create an empty set. Okay, so I also said that sets remove duplicate values. So if I add in some of the same numbers here to the end of our set, so I'll just add in a one, two, and three. If I save that and run it, then you can see that in our set, we still just get one through five and it removed those duplicate values. Okay, so now I'm going to remove those duplicates and just get back to where uh, we were. Um, okay, so just like with a list, we can also add and remove values from a set. So let's say that we wanted to add some more values to the set. So to add a new value, we can simply come to the next line and say s dot add, and we can add a six. So if we save that and run it, then you can see that the six was added to our set. Now, if this kind of stuff doesn't seem useful yet, then we will be seeing some practical examples of using sets in just a minute. Um, okay, so now what if you wanted to add multiple values to your set? Then you could use the update method and pass in a list or another set. So if we wanted to add the values of six, seven, eight, then instead of just doing add, which will add one value, I could say s1.update, and now we'll pass in a list of values that we want to add. So now if we run that, then we can see that using that update of 6, 7, and 8 added 6, 7, and 8 into our set. And we can update with another set as well. So if I made another set here called S2, and I'm going to also add some duplicate values to this as well. So I'll do uh, 7, 8, 9 in that set. And then within our update, let's update with this list of 6, 7, 8, and then also add in S2 to that update. So it's going to add the values from both this list and from this set. So if I save that and run it, then we can see that the values from both that list and that set were added to S1. And as usual, the duplicate values were removed since this is a set. Okay, so now what if we wanted to remove some values? Then we can either use the remove or discard methods. So let's look at the difference between the two of these. So if we wanted to remove the value of five, then I'm just gonna get rid of these lines here. If we wanted to get rid of the value of five from S1, then I could simply say S1.remove five. And if I save that and run it, then we can see that that value was removed. And if we use the discard method here, then that would give us this exact same result. 
The difference between remove and discard is if we try to remove a value that doesn't currently exist in our set. So if I try to remove a value of six here, which isn't in our S1 set, if I save that and run it, then you can see that we get a key error and it says the key error, we don't have a value of six. And that is whenever we try to remove a value that doesn't exist. But using discard won't throw a key error if a value doesn't exist. So if I go up here to remove and change this to discard and save that and run it, then you can see that it just prints out our set with no values removed. Um, so that's the difference between remove and discard. Okay, so now let's look at some more useful things that we can do with sets. So everything we've seen so far is pretty basic and similar to lists, but now let's look at operations like intersection and difference and union and things like that. So let me grab some different sets from my snippets here so that we can see some of the useful operations that we can do with these. So within my snippets, I'm just going to grab this first part here and paste this into uh, my module. Okay, so we can see that we have three different sets here of one, two, three, two, three, four, and three, four, five. So they have some overlapping values and they have some unique values. So let's say that we wanted to get a set of values that are in all of these sets. Now, if these were lists, then you could probably come up with a function or a list comprehension that could do this. But with sets, this is as simple as running the intersection method. So to do this, I can come down here and I can say, I'll create a new set and call this S4. And our new set will just be S1.intersection. And we will get the intersection for now, we'll get the intersection of S2. So this will give me all of the values that are in S2 that are also in S1. So if I uncomment out that print statement there and save that and run it, then we can see that we get a set of two and three. And the reason we got two and three is because two and three are in both S1 and in S2. So it didn't get the one or the four. Okay, so now what if I add S3 as an argument to our intersection here? So this is going to give us all of the values in S2 and S3 that are also in S1. Um, so before we even run this, uh, most likely we can tell that this is going to return a three because we can see that there is a three in S2 and a three in S3. And that is the only value in those two sets that is also in S1 up here at the top. So if I save that and run it, then you can see we got what we expect, the value of three. So these are operations that we can kind of do in our head with these small sets like this. But if these sets were much, much larger, you know, thousands of uh, values, then these operations save us a lot of time and efficiency uh, by doing this quickly. Okay, so we got our value that intersects with all three sets. Uh, now what if we want the values that are different? So to do that, we can use the difference method. So if I wanna see what values are in S1 that are not in S2, then I could come down here and say S1.difference and then pass in S2 as a value. Um, so most likely we are going to get a one for this since one is in S1 and it is not in S2. Two and three are within S2, so we shouldn't get that as a result. So if I save that and run it, then you can see that we do get that result of one. Now you might be wondering why it didn't also return a four here since four is in S2, but not in S1. But that is because we are running the difference method on S1. If we wanted the values that were in S2, but not in S1, then we could simply flip these. So I could say S2.difference and then pass in S1 as my argument. If I save that and run it, then we get the value of four because four is in S2, but not in S1. Now, if we wanted uh, the values that were different between both of those sets, so we wanted to return a set of one and four, that is called a symmetric difference. And we'll look at that in just a second. But for now, let's keep looking at this difference method. So we can pass in multiple sets as arguments here as well. So if I want the values that are in S2, but not in set one or set three, then I could say s2.difference and then pass in s1 as an argument and s3 as an argument. So if I save that and run it, 
then you can see that we get an empty set. And that's because if we look at our examples, then S2 doesn't have any values that aren't in either S1 or S3. So we can see the first two values here, two and three. Uh, we have a two, three in S1 and also a three in S3. And for this four, we have that four value in S3 as well. So there are no values in S2 that aren't in either of those lists. Now, if I was to change this around and say that I want the values, uh, the S3 dot difference of S1 and S2, then this is saying, give me the values that are in S3 that are not in either S1 or S2. So if we look at this example, then it should return a five because that's the only value that is not in either of these other two lists. So if I save that and run it, then you can see that we get a set of five. Okay, so I said we'd also look at the symmetric difference. Now the symmetric difference uh, allows you to compare two sets and get all of the differences between both sets. So if I go back to my original example here of S1 dot difference with S2, remember if I ran this, then we just got a one, but it didn't include this four, which is in S2, but not in S1. So if we wanted, all of the values that were different between those two sets, then I could simply just say symmetric underscore difference. Make sure I type that right, I think I did. So I'll save that and run it. And now you can see that we get one and four. And in this case, it shouldn't matter if we have S2 dot symmetric difference of S1 or which order those are in, because it's gonna give us the differences from both sets altogether. So the one here is unique to set one and the four is unique to set two. Um, okay, so now let's look at some more practical examples of where we use some sets or some of these techniques. So first of all, like we said before, this is a great way to remove duplicate values from a list. So let's say that we have a list that has some duplicates. So I will just create a list here called L1 and I will fill this in with one, two, uh, three, one, two, three, and save that. And we want a list that is equal to this one, but with the duplicates removed. So we might be tempted to write a small function that keeps appending the values to a new list one at a time and skips the values that have already been added. But that's a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Um, so first of all, we could simply say L2 is equal to a set of L1. And what that will do will cast our list to a set and remove the duplicates, but we're still left with a set. So now we can simply cast this set to a list again by wrapping that result uh, within a list. So if we save this and run it, whoops, and I did not print that out. So let me do a print of L2. So if I save that and run it, then you can see that we have a list of one, two, three, which is our original list with the duplicates removed. So the inner function here uh, casts this to a set and removes the duplicates, and the outer function here casts it back to a list. And we can see that we got the result that we were looking for. And the set approach is also much faster than any function that you could write with the same functionality, so it's more efficient as well. Okay, so now let me grab some more code from my snippets here, and we'll look at some more examples of the operations that we can do. So I'm going to grab these lists here and paste them in to my file here. And let me make this just a little smaller so that it all fits on the same line. Okay, so I've got three different lists here. One is a list of employees. Another is a list of employees who have gym memberships. And the last list is a list of employees who are developers. Now, this is just an example, but you can imagine situations where you'd have lists and sub lists like this that are much larger, maybe something that comes from a database or something like that. So let's imagine that these lists could be much larger and that we want to gather some information from these. So First of all, let's see which employees have both a gym membership and are also developers. So to do this, we can simply intersect the gym members with the developers. So let's try this out. So I'll say result is equal to, and we will get a set of the gym members, and we will do an intersection, so intersection, and we will intersect that with the developers. And then right underneath here, I am going to print our result. 
Um, now you could also cast developers to a set here also if you'd like, but it's okay to pass it in as a list as well. So we have to cast the first one to a set though, uh, because this intersection is a method of a set. So we had to cast that. So if I save that and run it, and I meant to pass in developers, not just developer. So I'll save that again and run it. And you can see that we get a result of April and Corey. And if we were to go up here and compare these two lists, then you would find that these are the two employees who are in both the developers list and the gym members list. And you could also cast that back to a list if you'd like, if you wanted a list as a result here. Okay, so now what if we wanted to get all of the employees who are neither gym members or developers? So to do this, we could use the difference method on our employees and then compare that to our other two lists. So to do that, I could simply say, uh, so I'll cast employees to a set, and then I'll say uh, I, that I want the difference. And I want the difference of people who are not gym members or developers. So again, what we're doing here is that we're getting uh, back all of the employees who are neither gym members or developers. So that is why we have employees in this first part here, and then passing in gym members and developers into this difference method here. So if I save that and run it, then if we were to go up here and actually compare these lists, then we could see that this is the result that we get back of the two employees who are not in the gym member list or in the list of developers. So shame on those two for not having an awesome job or staying in shape. Okay, so that is just a couple of examples of how you can solve some of these problems with sets. So there are a lot of problems that you'll run into like this. So definitely keep sets in mind if you're trying to solve a problem that involves comparing values between lists. Um, now, one more thing I think I should mention about sets is that they're very performant when it comes to doing membership tests. Now, if you don't know what I mean by membership tests, basically I mean that if you're doing, um, let's see, let me replace this line here. If you're doing a lot of stuff like this, so if uh, Corey in uh, developers, then, you know, print um, found. So this is actually a membership test here where you're looking for this value in our list. Then it's actually more performant to do those membership tests on sets rather than lists. So if your lists are huge and you're doing a lot of comparisons like this, then it should speed you up a good bit if you're able to convert those lists into sets and check that way. Um, so for those of you who know big O notation stuff, uh, it's big O of N to check if a value is in a list. So let me write that down. That is big O of N for a list. And it is O of one, which is constant for a set. And the reason it's big O of N for a list is because it has to scan the whole list until it finds the value. And for sets, it's just constant time. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. I hope that after you, this video, you have a better idea for how you can use sets to solve different problems in your daily workflow. Uh, but if you do have any questions about what we covered, then feel free to ask in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest ways is simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.